What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the International Farmer. It is April 5th. 2022 we got 37 mods to go through my goodness so let's not waste any time uh we got some cool stuff right in front of us but first let's take a look at the brand new map we're sitting on it right now it's called the pioneers map by vergamini modding and lost gamer so we're going to take a look at that this is the look at the map here lots of trees it's called pioneers map what i'm guessing is you know forestry baby sell that wood and start your empire you can create fields kind of like no man's land there's not anything out here except trees and land you do have your areas over here you got your pioneer terminal which is like a cell point i believe you got the vehicle shop gas station animal dealer bales sales uh, lizard cheese shop and then way over here on the other side of the map we have a supermarket we got the wiring plant, which I'm not sure what that is quite yet. And we got another pioneer cell point, lime station, debris crusher. We have the sawmill and then the sawmill that you can purchase. And right here on the corner is the wood chip sale. It looks like we have six, seven, eight pieces of land to buy. You start out owning the first one if you start in easy mode or whatever it is, the first option, you know. So if you were to sell that, you could sell it for $841,280. But let's say we already own it and we're shopping for some new land. Field two is going to cost $1.6 million, $1.8 million on field eight. I should have done those in order. Field three is $1.4 million. Four is $887,000. $1.1 million on this map here, or area down here. Field six or area six, 1.4 million. Seven is going to be 768,000. And then field eight, 1.8. And if you want to buy the factory areas, which are right here, right here, and it's going to cover this river area, that's going to cost you half a million dollars, 504,000 bucks. All right. So there you go. And let's fly around on it as well, real quick. And I'll prove to you just how many trees are out here. <laughs> so the land you start on, you got one field. As definitely has that no man's land feeling where you start with not much. You got your field here, and then you're just surrounded by trees. That's outside of the map over there, but everything in here is the inside of the map. And we got trees and little river running through the map, right through the middle of it. Over here is your first area of cell points. And we got the little village here as well. You got people that live here, people walking around, having a good time, enjoying the pioneer lifestyle. <laughs> and there's a couple of your stores. I think that's the main store where your stuff's going to spawn when you purchase it. So you're going to have a nice hike driving things back unless you uh, are on PC. There's other ways around that. We got our other cell points hiding in there. And then the rest is just dirt road that leads to the others. Factories on the other side of the map, but it's just all trees. So even on your own starting piece of land, you are going to have tons of trees and, you know, wood that you're going to be able to sell. So follow that dirt road all the way to the east end of the map, and that's where you'll find your other cell points. There's the Pioneer cell point. Here's the wiring plant. Not sure exactly what that details, but we could take a look at it here in a minute. Uh, you got your stone crusher. And then your sawmill. There's your wood chip sails. And you're right along the, uh, the big river here, which is pretty cool. You got the barge ship out here. A pretty, pretty nice view. All right, let's drop ourselves right about here. And let's check out what this plan is. Once we can find the... Uh, uh, oh, do I have to go upstairs to... Uh, this might be cool. Like, where's the purchase point? Is it up here? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool if it is. 
Ooh, there's a collectible piece of cheese. Ooh, we found some cheese, Lottie. <laughs> Very nice. These doors do not open. Or well, the heck do you? Hang up, Bobby. I get out of that door right there. All right, we need to figure out. Is this is this even a purchasable? What am I doing here? Oh, that's just a sell point. The wiring. Okay, I don't know. The wiring sell point. Okay, so my bad. That's just a sell point. So there you go. Let's go spawn back over to here. And let's take a look at the other mods. And just so you know, the Pioneer's map, it's in the 1980s is the uh, setting in left southern brazil for central western brazil in search of new land take on the role of one of these settlers in this map based on this region and era simulate with your friends a saga of the mato grosso pioneers and farming simulator you do have to create fields and build the farm yourself two points where you can sell grains pioneer and pioneer terminal one sell wool and cotton at the spinning mill sell wood chips and logs at the logging company includes three water source points identified with icons on the map Sale of potatoes, beets, and sugarcane at the Pioneer Terminal 1. Sell bales at Camericio de Balos. Limestone can be purchased at the port. Selling your products from the factories can be done on the market. And again, that is by Vergamini Modding and Lost Gamer. And it's a big old map for cross-platform. All right, let's dive into the other stuff here today, ladies and gentlemen. Right in front of us, we have a cool tractor. It is the Mahindra. The Mahindra 86110 by Hulse FS and Giant FS. Uh, I couldn't help myself. A Mahindra tractor. I don't know if we've ever had a Mahindra actual tractor, have we? Uh, first time I've seen one. Uh, but anyways, let's take a look at it. Buried in here with all these other 37 mods. <laughs> uh, tractors are required to pull trailers. Yeah, we know that. This thing costs $25,000. The Mahindra 86110P has 110 horsepower. Manual plus power shift transmission, 125 liter fuel tank, 24 miles per hour, weighing 4.4 ton. We do have the lizard option, which is like a rice wheel default. You can also put dual wheels on there. Auxiliary wheel. Thing's crazy looking, huh? And then we have auxiliary wheel two. And then we got the half cage. <laughs> that is just wacky looking. And then the cage wheel. The whole wheel is a cage. So this is for rice, I believe. And then we got the conical wheels. Conical. Saying conical because it's like a cone. Man, that is wacky. I guess that's for rice, right? I'm not big in I don't know much about rice farming, but I think these are for rice farming. Uh, rice default. Uh, wait. Oh, oh, my bad. We do have trail borg option. Standard wheel weights, wide tires and weights, rear narrow twins, and back to narrow. We do have Michelin with standard and wheel wide and weights with the wide. Rear twins, narrow, back to standard. Also got Continental with the same options as well. And Midas. So quite a selection of wheels here. Redestein as well. And Noki and Communial. Back to Lizard. All right, weight fender, we have no. We have a weight. Then we have a weight with, or we have a fender on the front. And then fender and weight. Design, exhaust. We have design one. We have chrome tip. We have full chrome. And then we have lower full chrome. And then a very small chrome. And back to design one. Windows, you got regular, or you got the dark tinted windows. Working out in the sun in Brazil, I'd probably go with the tinted windows, I. Huh? Attacher, we have this attacher here. And then your normal setup for the three-point. Front loader attachers, it will take, yes. Doesn't say which brand, but that looks like Quickie, I think. I think that's a Quickie setup, but maybe you can use both. I don't know. Main color, we have Mahindra red and black. Rim color, we do have white, gray, and black. And then you can put your license plate on the back side only. It does not let you put it on the front. Let's go fire this bad boy up, right? I want to see what the sounds like.
And we do have those dark tinted windows on there. Here's the inside look here. Got that nice Mahindra steering wheel. Looking fresh and clean. Ready for a dirty day in the fields of Brazil. I like it. Those lights off. Shut her down. By the way, you can. Oh, we gotta have it started first. There you go. You can open your doors if you really want to. All right, very nice. All right, next up, let's take a look at that fancy trailer it's hooked up to. Would you lock to? Wouldn't that be lovely? All right, that is, where is it? It's buried in here somewhere. Where are you at, you fancy little trailer? Oh, it's the auto load pack. The auto load pack, ladies and gentlemen. This is by Raleigh Christie One and VSR Modding Sir. That's right, don't you forget it either. Do you understand? Uh, the pallet trailer, $6,500, 20,000 to 40,000 liters, two ton. And it, the, the first one will hold all this stuff right here. It'll hold your fertilizers, lime, seeds, pig food, chicken food, um, salt, and mineral feed. The second one, the big bag trailer, is going to haul all your products that you like sell to productions. Bread, cake, butter, cheese, clothes. You know what I'm saying? You get the point? That's the one we're hooked up to. I'm going to test it out because I know a lot of people are probably going to wonder, is this going to be able to do more than one product or only one product at a time? So let's find out right now, eh? All right, so we're going to pull up to the cotton. Oh, that's not cotton. That's uh, wool. My bad. All right, it's automatically filling that. And it is not filling the bread. So yes, it is auto load, but it's only gonna do one product at a time. So that was a test. I just wanted to see if it would do both, but you're only gonna be able to do one product. Now, if we wanna unload, it's gonna throw them right back out there. And there we've loaded up our bread. And it's going to put it into boxes, all factory products, put it in a nice cage for protection while transporting. So there you go. We found out real quick right here that and not haul more than one product. wonder when someone's going to figure out how to do that, you know, to where we can haul more stuff on cross-platform. But either way, super easy to use. And it loaded those up pretty darn fast, so not much of a waiting time there. Not too shabby. Oh, along with Pioneer Map, if you start the game in easy mode, you are going to have starting equipment. It's going to give you the Valtra. It's going to give you a fertilizer, a driller, liquid fertilizer sprayer. It's also going to give you a plow and a nice new haul and harvester and header to start your day off with. So you do have some starting equipment when you start off with this map, the Pioneer's Map. All right, let's go check out the rest of the mods today. We have a list. I'm going to try to kind of run through them because there's a lot. We're going to go in order from the website, so I'll be bouncing around a little bit. So if we got the Manitou MC. This is by Kia Show. It's $37,000, and it also comes with the FEM forks um, to pick up your transport goods. That's 870. That weighs 180 kilogram there. No customizations on that like color nothing like that you get what you see and then the forklift itself has those big old wheels on the front 36 horsepower 71 liters of fuel 15 miles an hour and weighs 6.2 ton it has a lift mass fvd 33 front loader attacher or you can go with the fvd 37 and then we have the 45 back to the 33 so if you're really wanting to get serious there you can go pretty high with this bad boy uh, engine setup, we do have 36 horsepower, 50 horsepower. So you can go up to 50 horsepower. And the tank even gets bigger. Look at that. Nice little details there. 
even has the uh, air filter and stuff. Very nice. Wheel setup, we got Midas TR09s. And then we got the Midas TR09 twin with the weights on the rear. And then Nokian TR12s, also with the rears. Or I mean the twins on front and the weight in the rear. And we got Trailborg. Trailborg and Midas. Very cool. I kind of like the look of this right here. Be nice. All right, let's head over and look at the John Deere 6010 series by DB Modding. Here we have $70,000 for the 6010 series. It has a range between 105 and 185 horsepower, manual plus power shift transmission, 200 seven liter fuel tank operating at 24 miles per hour, weighing 6.3 ton. Take a look at that. Got that kind of, what do you say, early 90s look to it. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Uh, we got Trailborg with the standard wheel weights, standard two and wheel weights, wide tires and weights, narrow tires, and rear twins with the twins front and back, back to standard. We also have Midas. Just going to kind of run through these. It only has standard and wide for Midas. Michelin wide only. Nokian communal only. Continental has standard. Wheel weights, standard, has all the options as the first one. Then we have BKT with those beefy bad boys and the wide tire options. Back to standard. And then back to Trailborg. Design, standard. And then we have a left beacon light on top. Right and both for options. Extra lights, no. Extra lights, yes. You're going to see them pop up right here. Attachers, we got a 60 kilogram front weight. Then we got 360, 560, 760. 1,010 kilogram front weight. And then we got front hydraulic option as well. Very nice. Starfire 6,000 receiver on top center there. Then we got front loader attachments for Quickie. Power. Or none. Engine setup, we got 105 horsepower. 115. 125. 140, 150, 185. You can go all the way up to 185 horsepower on this bad boy. Not too bad. Front fenders, yes or no. You can rip those off if you want. And then you got your license plate hiding right here on the back corner there. Very nice. Can we put that on the front as well? Yes. All right, so over on your exhaust for the front. All right, next up after that is going to be the Case Puma CVX right here. That's by STV Modding. It's going to cost you $184,000. has a horse range between 225 and 270 horsepower. CVT transmission, 390 liter fuel tank, 34 miles per hour, weighing 9 ton. There she is. Pretty old case. Who doesn't like a nice looking case, Ron? I do. Uh, standard Trailborg, wheel weights in the rear, wide with weights. Back to standard. We got Michelin, standard weights, wide, rear weights. And we got Continental. Same options there. EKT. Back to there. And back to Trailborg. Engine setup, like I said, we got two and a quarter, 245, 260, 270. Back to two and a quarter. Main colors, we got. Your special red, chrome, black, shiny, and gray. We also have rim colors of silver and black. And your license plate, once again, on the front and the back. Very nice. All right, up after that is going to be the Massey Ferguson 4700 by Holtz FS and Joint FS. That is sitting right here. <clears throat> this has a range between 82 and 100 horsepower. It's going to cost you $20,500. Manual power shift transmission, 125 liter fuel tank, 24 miles per hour, weighing a whopping 3.9 ton. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Looks very nice with the rice wheels. Rice wheels are popular today. Dang, Bobby. Uh, this is also the same guy who made the Mahindra we looked at, so that explains the rice wheels. There you go. So you got your rice default dual and again, we got that auxiliary wheel, the full cage, and he left out the disc ones on this one. So no, no uh, cone disc wheels. Uh, we got Lizard, we got Trailborg with standard, wide, narrow, 
rear narrow and back to standard. Michelin has just your standard. Continental has standard wide and narrow tires back to standard. Midas, wide only. Vrida Stein is standard wide, narrow. And Nokian, also, back to Lizard. Weight Fender, no. Weight Fender. Fender and weight. Exhaust. This is just like the Mahindra, ladies and gentlemen. So we're just going to run through these options. Window, you got the tinted, dark, or regular. Attacher on the back is going to be just like the Mahindra. Front loader attacher, quickie, hour, or none. Then you got your 82 horsepower. You got 92 horsepower, 100. So 100 is your max rim color. We can do gray and black. And we got license plate on the back only with these tractors. And built-in beacons. Very nice. All right, up after that is going to be the 980K wheel loader. Big boy right here. This is by Ganamsk. A wheel loader is used to stack and load various goods. $200,000 for the wheel loader tractor itself. 370 horsepower CVT transmission. 320 liter fuel tank. 25 miles per hour. And weighs 31.4 tons. So she's heavy. Also comes with a 980K bucket, which costs $1,400. And will hold 12,500 liters per scoop. 351 kilogram weight on the bucket. And as you can see, scrolling down here, you should be able to scoop up pretty much everything. So good stuff here. Let's take a look at the tractor itself. Very large, and very heavy. We have Trail Borg with standard. Michelin with standard. Continental with standard. Nokian with standard. Back to Trail Borg. Uh, license plate is going to be, and we put it on the front, Yes, we have license plate top center and license plate on the back right corner. Big boy right there. And then, of course, it comes with the big old bucket, which can hold 12,500 liters. Pretty sweet. If you're trying to get some things moved around or maybe at the like BGA plant, you'll be able to move stuff quite quickly and easily. All right. After that, we have the Dondi Discovitis by SMI Malding Team. This is a subsoiler, prepares the fields for the next sowing. It can be used instead of a plow. This tool suits perfectly for grape and olive farming. It's going to cost you $12,500. It's going to require 65 horsepower, weighs 1.1 ton with a 2 meter working width, and operates at 7 miles per hour while you're working in the fields. Very small. As you can see, it will fit between your orchards. Very nice. I like the... Don de brand on there. Very nice. All right. <laughs> All right. Next up is the SIP Silvercut Disc 300 FS Flow. That is a mouthful. All right. This is by Agrar Design Austria. It's a mower that cuts grass. Costs you $16,720. Requires 61 horsepower. Weighs 736 kilograms with a three meter width for mowing. And you can cut grass at 13 miles per hour. So that's the SIP brand, S-I-P, however you want to say it. Got those little purple stickers all over it, looking fancy. Design color, we can go with black rubber or black plastic. We got your black plastic texture or rubber. I kind of like the rubber uh, texture myself. A little more realistic. But there you go. Very nice. Next up is the Massey Ferguson 2270 XD by LS Agrar. Oh, that is a nice baler here. Turns loose straw, grass, or hay into convenient bales. It's going to require 200 horsepower, costs $125,000, weighs 11.5 ton. It's going to make square bales between 180 centimeter to 240 centimeter, 12 miles per hour while you're working it. Not too bad. And there she is, looking quite lovely. And that is for square bales. It does have a built-in beacon, it looks like. You got your warning signs and your license plate on the back rear end. ETO connection. Uh, Trailboard wheel option. Michelin. BKT. Redestein. Back to Trailboard. Main colors, we can do red, black, silver, green, white, and massy orange. 
rim colors. We got all kinds of options here. Let's just throw some, uh, I don't know, white wheels on there. That actually looks quite lovely. So there you go. And license plate is on the back left corner. So a new baler for you. Very nice. All right, up after that is going to be the Rapid 8400W by Mantrid. That's this bad boy right here. A forage, forage wagon collects grass, hay, or straw. can also be filled with chaff. It's going to cost you 150000 Brand is Shweddy Maker. I like to say Shweddy Maker. All right, it's going to require 240 horsepower. Holds between 53 and 56,500 liters of product. 13.5 ton and operates at 12 miles per hour. That'll do grass, straw, silage, um, hay, and chaff. Take a look at the options here. We got standard configuration. Extension is going to make this backside longer so you can hold more. And then standard and silage additive tank right here. And then you're extended with the additive tank. Trailborg wheels with standard 4S. 40s back to standard we got michelin with the 50s 45s and the 50s we also got Fredestein with the 71050 the 845s back to the 710s bkt has built-in 71050s and then back to trailboard we have beacon lights no or we have beacon lights yes that's gonna shove them right on the back corner there and then main color we have red and we got just a crap load of colors so let's do metallic light green and then let's do metallic yellow and for the rim color we can do metallic pink and then you got your license plate you can make this thing look quite wacky looking all right so do what you want with it eh all right let's go take a look at the next one guys we got a lot of mods holy smokes we got the kuhn hr 4004 btf 4000 tf 1512 <gasps> mm. all right three pieces come in this this is from nico do 55 first you have the cultivator that propel prepares the fields for the next sowing it needs 100 horsepower weighs two ton four meter working width at nine miles per hour you got the design none then you got the track loosener then you got the ridge marker option, track and ridge, back to none. Attachers, you got three point PTO or none. You can get this thing looking all fancy if you want to. All right, up after that is their BTF 4000 that comes with it. This is used to seed crops like wheat, barley, or canola. So you can attach that to that. So you're doing two things at once. You're cultivating and you're seeding your crops. You can do wheat, barley, oats, canola, soybeans, sorghum, oil seed radish, and grass. Requires 100 horsepower, weighs 940 kilogram, with a four meter working width at nine mile per hour. They so just click that, attach it to the other attachment, and bada bing, bada boom, baby. And then here is your extension and an additional tank to increase the capacity of your tools. All three of these should be able to connect to each other for quite the setup. This is the TF-1512. It's going to hold 1,500 additional liters of seed weighing 800 kilogram. And there you go. You got a standard design and a front weight. So the front weight, too, adds even more weight here. There you go. All right. Do you like that? I hope you like that. Yeah. All right. Next is going to be the Kuhn Performer 4000 by Madar HR. A cultivator that prepares fields for the next sowing. It's going to cost you $30,000, requiring 240 horsepower at 5.7 ton with a 4 meter working width, 9 mile per hour. We got Trailborg option with standard, Michelin with the standard, BKT, and Vredestein. Back to Trailborg. And that is it for customization, but very nice. Got the logo on the side there on the bar, and 4 meter working width. Looks like it would do more width, but I guess those don't fold out too wide. Looks pretty sharp, though. Nice for medium-sized farm in there. Next up's the Neverlin AB85 by Puzzcap. Puzzcap. With a plow, you can prepare fields for the next sowing and create new fields. It's going to cost you $14,000, 85 horsepower required, 845 kilograms on the weight, 2 meter working width at 7 mile per hour while you're working in the field. All you do have is some color changes on the plow itself. 
gray, and there's red. All right, very small for very small farming. All right, after that, we have the Slurry Shuttle. The Slurry Shuttle by Bayan Agarar. This is to transport liquids, digest it, and slurry. Not to spread it. It's just to transport it from point A to point B. Maybe you're going to unload it from your cow shed or your pig stalls and take it to the BGA to uh, be turned into digestate, whatever. It's a transport liquid, all right? It's going to cost you $12,840, requiring 128 or 120 horsepower to pull it. Holds 16,500 liters, weighs 4.6 ton, and here's the uh, options on it. Got some nice old looking wheels there. We got Lizard with Standard, Continental, back to Lizard, main color. We can do white or galvanized. Design color can be red or black on the frame. And rim color can be whatever you want it to be. License plate, bottom center. There you go, the slurry shuttle. All right, after that, we have the Joskin Modula 2 by the Boudouact. The bu 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 I can't talk. The Boudouac team. How's that sound? That's close. Uh, this is going to cost $77,500. It's a slurry tanker used to fertilize the field with slurry. So this one you can actually use. It's going to require 150 horsepower, 15.8 thousand liters it'll hold, 8.1 ton, 12 meter working width. At 10 miles an hour, it will be able to spread digestate or slurry. And that is the Joskin brand. We got Trailborg with standard, wide got Michelin with standard and wide. Wide 2. Back to standard. Nokian with standard and wide. BKT with standard and wide. Redestine, standard and wide. And Midas with standard and back to Trailborg. Main colors, we can do all of them. I'm going to change the PTO and the bottom frame axles. Design color, we can change that. That's going to be your hoses. Rim color, whatever you want. You can do it blue if you'd like. See that? And then your license plate will be hiding right above, right next to the beacon. There is a built-in beacon as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got another slurry tank, the Cult VE8000 by the Budoek team as well. And again, it's a slurry tanker that does spread the slurry on the field. It's going to cost you 23,085 horsepower required. Hauls 8,000 liters, weighs 2.5 ton with a 9 meter working width at 10 miles per hour. Again, it does digestate and slurry. All right, we have the Trailborg set up on the wheels, standard, wide, BKT standard, Michelin standard, standard 2 and wide. And we got Redestein with the standard and standard 2 and wide. And back to Trailborg. Design, we have white and color so if you want it red or white main color we can change it whatever we would like rim color again we can do whatever we want there license plate will be right in the center of the tank on the rear end right there come on baby <clears throat> all right are we there yet holy smokes all right next up is the farm tech super fx 800 manure spreader by bgamer003 uh, this is going to cost 27500 It's a manure spreader to improve, improve the harvest of your fields. But it also holds everything. So I guess you can use it as a trailer if you want. If you don't want to spread stuff, you can use it as a trailer. 64 horsepower required for manure spreading. It can hold between 10,500 to 12,500 liters. Weighs 2.2 ton with a 10 meter working width at 12 miles per hour. And as you can see... It can transport anything you want. I imagine we got setups for that. So we got configuration standard trailers. All right, so you can set it up as a trailer where this is just a nice little door to dump. <clears throat> so there's your trailer with the boards. Uh, we do have trail board with R17s, R18s. Back to R17. We have BKT with built-in R17s. Same with Redestein. Lizard is the one has built in R22s. And Michelin as well with the 22s. Main color, we can do red 
faded red and black. Design color, we can do green. Zinc. What's that say? Standard. All right, I like. I kind of like the zinc. Very nice. So that's cool. You can change it from trailers or make it a manure spreader. All on the click of a button, eh? All righty then. All right, next up, we got the Lizard Round Bale Fork. This is by VR Modding. It's going to weigh 245 kilograms. It's a bale loader. Eases the collection of bales and costs 600 bucks. There is no customization to it, but it's to pick up round bales, as you can see. Scoop up under it and lift. Carry two bales. All right, after that is the Transport Box. Transport Box by Austri. Transport box for transport and various tools or loads. Or it says loads, my bad. 490 kilograms weighs $400. Did I say it weighs $400? It costs $400. Man, this is a long video, huh? Uh, main colors, all the colors of the rainbow. You can shove a bale in there, or a bag, or a little pallet, I imagine. So there you go. All right, we have the draw bar up next. This is going to be by Happy Mole. A draw bar for the lower hinge for the third point. Weighs 23 kilogram, only costs $65. There you go. That will make it easier to connect to things if it's... Yeah, I've used them. It's quite nice. Some tractors are a bugger, so using this will make it a lot easier for connecting to certain things. All right, after that, we do have the tractor triangle. This is the Dith Marsher modding is who created it. It's a flegal tractor triangle. A weight helps to keep the tractor's wheels on the ground and improves its balance. Costs 253 bucks, weighs 60 kilogram, and you can change the color. It's a weight in the shape of a triangle. It is what it says it is. It's a tractor triangle. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead over and take a look at those placeables and some other info on these 37 mods today. We got to keep on trucking here. So let's go. All right. Let's take a look at the placeables. Got quite a handful of those as well. First up, we got the open air garden. This is by Omatana. It's an air garden for growing vegetables and fruit outdoors. In winter, a plastic foil greenhouse appears, protecting the plants from the cold weather. In addition to tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries, you can grow potatoes and sunflowers in this garden. The potatoes and sunflowers are delivered in open pallet boxes. In addition to the standard recipes where water is sufficient as an ingredient, there are also recipes with seed and fertilizer or seed and manure. These additional recipes bring more and faster plant growth. This gives you more profit than your pure water recipes. Price for the gardens, 2000 daily upkeep, $10. So an open air garden. There's one of the pallets of titers right there. Covered in the winter time. That's pretty awesome. I like it, I like it. All right, let's check up the next one is the seed and fertilizer production. And this is gonna be by Happy Mole. Right here, small production facility for seeds and fertilizers. Input wheat gives you liquid. Fertilizer, barley also, oat, and output is seed and liquid fertilizer for all those crops. Uh, down here, I don't know why it's repeated twice. And then you got manure and water will give you fertilizer. Price is gonna be 30,000, daily maintenance of 15. Production speed, 2,000 liters per hour. Liquid fertilizer can be delivered by tank or pallet filled with liquid fertilizer. Pallet with liquid fertilizer is going to be 1,200, capacity 750 liters. So there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. Nice details to it. Seed and fertilizer production. After that, we have the bunker silo set. This is by Top Ace 888. In this set is a bunker silo with a capacity of 500,000 liters. It can be placed directly next to each other and expanded using the snapping function. There are two walls and a ramp that can be placed against the silo to close it on one side. In addition, an area in front of the silo can be blocked for tipping with the tipping free area so that nothing falls out of the silo during compaction. Use the water gutter as an aid when placing. 
so that the area can be placed exactly. The dirt marks this area and must face for outwards. If there are any problems with the placement, please switch to the free mode. The ground is painted as concrete and the terrain will be adjusted. They have a 10 meter by 24. They have a 10 meter by 24 with seven slots. Uh, slots two, two, four with eight meter by two meter walls or 10 meter by 10 meter. And then they got the tipping free area, 10 meter by four meter. And that's a one slot. Screenshots will show that a little better. So <clears throat> as you can see, it's got this little area here that keeps it from going out of the bin. That's quite lovely. That way you're not wasting any built-in ramps to just back up and dump in and you know keep it level as you're dumping and fill it that's pretty cool good idea good stinking idea right there there's that protection area that's not gonna let any of it get out pretty cool all right up after that is the pallet pusher the pallet pusher this is by no dot name Tired of driving to a pallet spawning place and pushing pallets with your tractors? Well, just place this pallet pusher and you will not need to have dedicated vehicles at spawning places to keep your production running. The pallet pusher will help you, pushing pallets out of spawning place of production so you keep them running easily, pushing pallets nicely together so that you can pick up two pallets at a time with your pallet fork. Isn't that lovely? Shop category, it's going to be in decorations and a price from $500. This pack includes six different versions, length of 7 meter, 12 meter, 16 meter, a width of one or two pallets. Some hints, as always with placeables, save the game before placing. Flatten the area before placing and the pusher does not flatten the area. The pallet pusher does not test for collisions with other objects. Before pushing the pallet, stop the time. Otherwise, new pallets might spawn while the pusher is driving. All right. <laughs> All right, so there you go. It's a pusher. That's pretty cool. Um, interesting, but cool. So it's going to literally push all those down the aisle into a nice little spot. That's very interesting. We got some modders with quite the imagination, I'll tell you what. All right, next up is the Dutch Shed Pack. The Dutch Shed Pack. This is by Re Farmer and DMI 20MM Normandy, a Dutch Shed Pack. It includes a machine shed. This is a storage for your machinery. The door is a five by five meters. Size 40 by 25 is 105,000 with $50 upkeep per day. And then you got a machine shed with a workshop. It's a workplace for your machinery with storage included for storing your machines. It's a contractor building. The workshop door is high enough for small and medium vehicles, not for big machinery. 50 by 25, $75,000, daily upkeep of 50. And then you have the modern shed, a shed for the crops or machinery. It is intended for medium size equipment. 25 by 13 meter, $30,000 at $15 upkeep. Here's some looks at the shed pack. Very nice. It is quite lovely, isn't it? All right, next up is going to be the Steel Sheds Pack. This is by Maka. The Steel Shelter open from both sides, $2,700, upkeep of three. The Steel Shelter open from one side, $3,500, $5 upkeep, and then one for $5,000 and a $5 upkeep. This one has two doors. So you got three different shed packs. You got your smallest, your medium, and your big one. Got the doors on each side, and then there's your open one. Another open drive through shelter. A little bit of decorations inside, some nice lighting. Very nice, very nice. All right, next we have the Alpine Farmhouse. This is by Omatana. Walk in the farmhouse in Alpine style. The Alpine style farmhouse is walkable. It has an open floor plan, kitchen and living room, an office, three bedrooms, and two bathrooms. The sleep tricker works throughout the house, even in the entrance area. In the master bedroom, you find a wardrobe trigger. This house is also available as a holiday home for passive income as a decorative object. Prices of the farmhouse are fifty thousand. Holiday home is fifty thousand with an income of ninety six hundred dollars per month. Decoration house is five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, that's pretty nice. I like it. So it is open. You can walk in and just role play if you're playing on a server or whatever, making a video. You know what I'm saying? 
pretty cool. Uh, next up is the old big building by Matej Mods. Old large building for agricultural machinery. Daily upkeep, $25. Price is going to be $45,000. And it's got, it looks like you can fit your harvester in there. At least a smaller sized one. Got the big truck in there as well. Plenty of doors for small equipment. Nice sliding inside. There you go. Pretty nice looking placeable there. That is by Matej Mods. After that, we have the barn with garage, also by Matej Mods. A barn with garage with solar panels for agricultural machinery. The solar panels give you daily earnings between $20 to $60, depending on the difficulty of the game. The old barn, daily upkeep, $15 a day. Price for the whole thing is $50,000. Some screenshots for... Ooh, I like that. Mm, it definitely has that rustic, old, dirty look to it. I like it. That's what a barn with a garage should look like. Nice and dirty. All right, up after that, we're getting close. Beehive pallets with the multi-spawner. This is by Vanquish081. A rack where the honey produced by the hives is spawned, stored in the form of pallets, Price is 400 Capacity, it'll hold nine pallets. And this is for your beehive operation. So it's going to put them on actual racks here. As you can see, bada bing, bada boom. Very cool. It can hold up to nine pallets. Three, six, and then a top shelf. All right, up after that is Ground Stains by Top Ace 888 this set contains a total of 11 impurities as floor textures. The textures can be placed on flat as well as sloping ground. The slope adjusts automatically. However, the slope must be even on the size of the texture. If it does not work so well on a slope, turn the texture a little and try again. The ground is neither leveled nor painted. Plants are not or only partially removed. The textures can be sold again. The AI helpers should not recognize placed textures as obstacles price is fifty dollars category is going to be decoration and others slots one to three uh here you go we're on here and place some cracks in the road some dirty old stains here's a different selection of what type of stains it is we got stones mud splatter i'm not sure what that is so there you go. If you like to get really intense on your decorations, you got some new ground stains. Next up is Deco Stones, aka Decoration Stones. This is also by Top Ace 888. This set is a set of several plus placeable decorative stones. The stones can be placed on flat as well as on sloping ground, just like the stains. Uh, price is $50. Category decoration as well. So you can place some stones just to give things a little more realistic look. We got some big stones. And then we got some little pebbles. That could make yourself a nice little cobblestone driveway. That's pretty cool. I like that. Oh, interesting. Very nice. Next up is the large diesel tank by Flusty94. You ain't messing around. You got a large placeable diesel tank for your farm. Tank must be filled with fuel prior to refueling your vehicles. Cost is 15,000. It can hold 50,000 liters of fuel. Daily upkeep of 40. And it is a placeable fuel tank. 50,000 liters. That's quite lovely. That's pretty good. I can't remember what the end game one holds, but it ain't nowhere near 50,000 liters. Like, I'm not, I don't think anyway. All right, and our final mod of the day. This was a lot of mods to cover. We got the old water tower. Uh, this is by Team Rheinland Fultz and Marcus. At this water tower, you can fill your water trailers. Price is 5,000, daily upkeep of 10. This is a placeable old water tower. And I like it because it's got that old rustic look. Yeah. And shove that on an old farm or a new one, I suppose. But it would look good on an old style farm. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 37 mods we just went over today. Holy smokes. <laughs> 37 mods. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, hit that like button to show a little appreciation if you did enjoy it. And we will catch you tomorrow. This is the International Farmer. Go enjoy 
those 37 new mods. <laughs> Have a great one, everybody. I'm out.